thank you hello uh, so our honorable uh, speaker has joined now uh, i would like to take permission from honorable director sir can we start the program sir uh, please uh, professor khadam go ahead okay thank you so much sir yes anchor it is over to now you can start the program uh, sir am i audible sir yes you are can, can you can you can you hear me can you hear me yes sir yes 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 professor kangri we can hear you uh, i cannot start my video uh, uh, it says yes yes you can yes. stop it uh, okay yes yes you can start your video please it says you you cannot start your video because the host has stopped yes, it yes yes actually i have informed to host and uh, host is uh, doing this okay sir okay. done sir now you can start okay uh, sir uh, now uh, now you can uh, start your video host has given you permission and uh, uh, anchors it is over to you now you can start the program please uh, okay sir can... good afternoon to all the Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. Good afternoon to all the participants present over here. This is Abdullah Ahmed as your anchor for today's opening session of Day to Export lecture. We hope today we have an excellent knowledge sharing session. So uh, before we proceed further, please take a glance at the instructions present on the screen. Now, with great pleasure, I'm inviting esteemed director of BBD NITM, BBD ITM, Professor Dr. Bhavesh Kumar Chauhan, for the welcome address. Thank you, Mr. Abdullah. I interrupt the program. I, on behalf of uh, our chairperson, Shrimati Alka Das, and president of BBD Educational Group, Sri Viras Sagar Das, and all the stakeholders of BBD Educational Group. and ieee forum including v affinity group of bbd itm welcome the guest speaker of today dr korhan sang kanjis uh, who is an assistant professor with trakaya university he is a senior member and also the editor of turkish journal of electrical engineering and computer sciences it's an honor to welcome you sir that despite your busy schedule you have taken time out to address the students at lucknow up india and i'm sure all the students through this interaction will be benefited and maybe forging a collaboration in time to come with your department and your university in turkey thank you very much and congratulation to organizing committee of this event particularly v group office bearers and ieee student branch i also appreciate the branch counselor professor rafiq ahmed and organizing secretary dr khadim moin siddiqui for their planning and execution of this di distinguished lecture series thank you very much over to the anchor mr abdullah thank you thank you so much honorable sir for the welcome address and now as we know that our honorable speaker for today's session is dr koran jangis so let me tell you about him Dr Korhan Cengiz was born in Erdin Turkey in 1986 he received a bachelor's degree degree in electronics and communication engineering from Kocaeli University in 2008 and business administration administration from Anadolu University in 2009 he took his master's degree in electronics and communication engineering from Namik Kemal University in 2011 and the phd degree in electronics engineering from Kadir House University in 2016 Since 2018 he has been an assistant professor with the electrical electronics engineering department in Trakya University All universities mentioned being in Turkey itself he is the author of over 40 articles including IEEE Internet Internet of Things journal IEEE Access three book chapters 
two international patents and one book in Turkish. He holds several book and journal editorial positions in Springer, Springer Elsevier, and IEEE. He presented 10 plus keynotes in reputed IEEE and Springer conferences about WSN's IoT and 5G. He's an editor of the Turkish Journal of Electrical Engineering and Computer Sciences. He's senior member IEEE since August 2020. Dr. Cengiz's awards and honors include the Tubita Priority Areas PhD Scholarship, the Kadir Has University PhD Student Scholarship, and Best Presentation Award in ICAT 2016 Conference and Best Paper Award in ICAT 2018 Conference. Now, delighted, I'm inviting our honorable speaker, Dr. Koran Cengiz, for the expert lecture. Sir, the stage is all yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. So let's uh, share my screen. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, okay, today uh, we will talk about the routing protocols uh, for wireless sensor networks. Uh, in my PhD, uh, I have designed two routing protocols for wireless sensor networks. One of them is LEFCA, Low Energy Fixed Clustering Algorithm, and the second one is Autop LEFCA. Uh, it has uh, clustering nature and also multi-op routing. Uh, it is combination of clustering and multi-op routing. So today we will talk about wireless sensor networks, uh, two main routing protocols, uh, which were designed by uh, us, by me and my PhD supervisor. And also I will talk about some future scopes for wireless sensor networks and also Internet of Things. So uh, as an outline, let's start with motivation. Now, uh, we know that wireless sensor networks are widely used in several kinds of applications. You can find uh, the usage of wireless sensor networks in thousands of fields. For example, disaster relief, target tracking, environmental control, smart cities, medicine, and healthcare. Especially the healthcare applications related with wireless sensor networks is very important, very significant. So in healthcare applications, it is very important to collect information from the environment uh, every time for each round. So especially you should design robust and providing full network connectivity wireless sensor network protocol for healthcare applications. In wireless sensor network to distribute the measured sense data, you can use three main approaches, direct transmission, multi-op routing and clustering. In direct transmission, uh, sensors tries to transmit information individually to the remote base stations. In multi-op routing, the sensors were used as relay nodes, as gateway nodes to distribute the uh, information and to transmit the collected information to the base station. And finally, in clustering, there are cluster heads which are responsible to collect information from the cluster members. Here, uh, we designed two protocols. LEFCA is a clustering protocol and our MALTOP LEFCA is uh, a clustering protocol 
but also it has multi-op routing nature. Okay, so uh, in wireless sensor network, cluster topologies change very frequently and this uh, causes to some problems, increasing energy cons consumption, decreasing network lifetime, and also it brings some additional network uh, overhead. So our proposed Lefka protocol tries to solve these issues by using fixed clustering and also changing the cluster head election process of the uh, existing protocols. So uh, for related words, uh, in the literature, you should first start with Leech because it is the most known routing protocol in wireless sensor network. Uh, it was designed uh, in MIT. Uh, it uh, was also a PhD uh, thesis. And Leach uh, has two main phases, setup phase and the steady state phase. In the setup phase, the cluster formation occurs. And this, in the steady state phase, data transmission to the base station occurs. There are thousands of Leach variants, uh, the extensions to Leach. There are a lot of leech-based protocols in the literature, but in leech there are some problems. Especially, leech uses probabilistic cluster head selection mechanism, which tries to select cluster heads by using a probabilistic function, and the clusters, the cluster formations, and the cluster heads are distributed and selected all randomly. For some rounds, there are some problems in clustering process. For some rounds, clusters are not formed. So for some rounds, you cannot collect any information from the network in each network. So this can cause to serious problems, especially in healthcare applications, earth, earthquake measurements, fire measurements. So therefore, we aim to solve these significant problems of leech and leech-based protocols in our proposed LEFCA and Paltop LEFCA protocol. There are a lot of extensions to leech in the literature. You can find thousands of protocols. Uh, LeachF also uh, can be used as a related work, but uh, it is leech-based nature, but it has uh, fixed clusters. And it is near to our protocol. So therefore, we used also LeachF in our uh, analysis and simulations. Mod leach is also another uh, famous protocol and it has threshold based cluster changing mechanism also our lefka has threshold based cluster changing mechanism dec also another famous protocol and it has heterogeneous network there are some advanced nodes in a dec protocol also stable election protocol is another famous protocol in the literature and there are you can find a lot of protocols so our lefka uh, it aims to use at first fixed clustering and cluster head determination via base station approaches together it uses intelligent cluster head determination mechanism at the beginning this mechanism tries to determine the nodes that are almost at the center of their associated clusters at the beginning of the algorithm instead of determining them randomly. For this part, uh, for this intelligent cluster at determination part, we made a random determination and intelligent determination we made two analyses for them and simulations, and we have obtained that when we use intelligent cluster at determination, we approximately obtain 10% energy savings, 10% energy efficiency. Therefore, 
we decided to use intelligent cluster at determination at the beginning of the Lefka protocol. In so many protocols, the clusters and the cluster heads uh, are determined randomly and it is a widely used idea, but Lefka has an intelligent cluster at determination. And we used fixed clustering, so in our approach, the cluster heads at the beginning uh, were determined, and then these cluster heads stay fixed, and also the cluster formations stay fixed. And for the following rounds, next, next rounds, we used same environment, same cluster, same cluster formations, okay? And also, our LEFCA has a threshold-based cluster change mechanism. It aims to abuse the energies of the cluster heads before electing a new cluster head. And this is the novel part of LEFCA protocol. This idea is not proposed in any of the existing algorithms. And this part also can be dangerous because using abusing the cluster heads can cause the uh, die of the cluster head nodes. In other words, can cause to become out of battery. So when a cluster head node becomes out of battery, you cannot collect any information from that part of the network, okay? So this can cause serious problems, especially when you use LEFCA protocol in healthcare applications, earthquake measurements, fire measurements, it can cause to serious problems. So the determination of threshold value is very important part of the LEFCA protocol and we should be careful while determining it, okay? I will explain how can uh, we determine the threshold value to provide full network connectivity without uh, causing to any network disconnection, okay? So our LEFCA also has setup phase and the steady state phase. In the setup phase, uh, the cluster formation occurs, the cluster heads were elected, and the steady state, state phase, our determined cluster head transmit the measured collected information from the members to the remote base stations. So um, let's see, there are two main messages in the wireless propagation model of our LEFCA protocol. One message is uh, advertisement message and the second message is join request message. The advertisement message is broadcasted by cluster head nodes. Cluster heads, uh, when they were uh, selected as cluster heads, they broadcast into the network that I'm elected at, as cluster head. And then the normal members, normal sensor nodes, transmits join request message to the cluster heads. And then they join the nearest cluster head as a cluster member. And then the cluster formation has completed, okay? So after the cluster formation completed, for example, think about that. We have a cluster. There is a one cluster head and there are 10 sensor nodes normal members. Now, these sensor nodes collect information from the environment. For example, they measure uh, temperature, they measure humidity, they measure pressure, and then transmit this information to the associated cluster head. How can he transmit? It can transmit in uh, their associated time slots. For each time slot, 
sensor node transmits information and then after cool transmission of the all member nodes completed our cluster head transmit the collected information to the base station in its associated time slot these time slots correspond to time durations they are equal time slots and you know this idea is time division multiple access in wireless communication for example these are fixed time slots for example two seconds this one uh, between zero to two two to four four to six so after these processes done our setup phase is completely completed okay and then the important part is cluster head change decision part now our cluster head at the beginning was selected uh, by using the intelligent cluster head determination and then our cluster head acts as cluster head its main job collecting information from the members and transmitting transmitting this information to the base station also uh, in lefka protocol we have threshold based cluster head selection and changing so for each round we should check the remaining energy of the our existing cluster head and then according to this remaining energy we decide that our existing cluster head will continue as a cluster head or will be elected new cluster head okay so this threshold value is very important and we especially use very low threshold value in other words we aim to abuse the energy of the cluster heads in lefka protocol so this is the novelty of lefka and this provides us very significant energy savings when we compared it with the existing algorithms okay so uh, is there any problem uh, is it visible and can you hear me is it okay how is it going yes sir, you i would like to check okay everything okay right <clears throat> that's good okay now uh for cluster head change decision uh in other words determining the suitable proper threshold value we should use this formula okay this equation shows us the energy consumption of a cluster head in wireless propagation channel okay so This term shows the distance to the base station. We have remote base station. Uh, it is outside of the sensor field. And we have significant distance between the sensor field and the base station. This is the main problem. So for our parameters, uh, let's talk about the parameters. We have 100 sensor nodes which were randomly distributed to the environment and our environment has the dimensions of 100 meter to 100 meter and we use some specific uh, data length and other uh, parameters and according to our parameters for our wireless channel model there is a significant distance value which is 87 meters this distance is called as crossover distance okay and 
according to this crossover distance, the energy dissipation of cluster head of or of any node can be determined. Okay, so if our cluster heads distance is higher than this crossover distance, this 87 meters, it will consume its energy according to the fourth power of the distance. So this will cause to significant energy dissipation, okay? So for all protocols in wireless sensor networks, our protocol and other uh, protocols tries to decrease this crossover distance, okay? Tries to become lower than this crossover distance. And therefore, they are using clustering because if you don't use clustering, if you try to transmit information via your sensor nodes individually, you will consume large amount of energy because your sensor nodes will be will have distance uh, approximately higher than this crossover distance and they will automatically consume energy according to the fourth power. And when you decrease this distance, when you decrease it below to crossover distance, your energy consumption will be proportional to second power of that distance. So this term will become d square, okay? So when we use this equation and when we consider the worst case, we can find the threshold value for Lefka protocol. We thought that we have only one cluster head and the other all nodes are normal members. And this cluster head is at the origin and it has highest distance to the base station, okay? It has highest distance. So for this case, and according to this equation, how much energy will our worst case cluster head consume? We tried to calculate this energy consumption and according to our calculations, we obtained that this value is 0 0.005 joules, okay? Now, our sensor nodes, identical, and each sensor node starts with two joules initial energy, okay? So, for the worst case, our cluster head, when we have only one cluster, all other nodes are normal members, we will consume approximately this value. So, according to this calculation, we decided to use the threshold value. It is 10 times higher than this value, and we determined it as 0 0.05 shoes, okay, for Lefka protocol. So, when we select a cluster head node, as you know, at the beginning, it starts with two joules and we use its energy until its energy becomes 0 0.05 joules. And for example, for our Lefka protocol, one cluster head can be used as a cluster head for, for example, 500 rounds, 1000 rounds, okay? We aim to abuse it. And also this abusement provides us significant energy savings and also it significantly decreases the network traffic because when you change the cluster heads frequently in a wireless sensor network, you should generate new 
cluster had advertisement messages, join request messages, as you remember, uh, we thought that there are some, you know, advertisement messages and also join request messages. So it will cause to additional network messages, additional data packages in the network. Therefore, in this algorithm, in this uh, protocol, we aim to use and we aim to use threshold base cluster selection and also we aim to abuse our cluster heads, okay? So, and also let's uh, talk about some, the multi low energy fixed clustering algorithm, <laughs> multi defka Now, I will summarize it from a figure, okay? Now, in original Lefka, let think uh, first. Uh, let think about the Lefka. Okay, in original Lefka, as you see, the nodes which are almost at the center of the our sensor field were determined as cluster heads. Okay, you can see from this figure. For example, for cluster one our uh, cluster head is 5 and for cluster 4 our cluster head is 20 okay now in original lefka our normal nodes sensor nodes measure the environment and then transmit these measurements to the base uh, to the cluster heads for each cluster this process will be done okay and then our cluster heads will transmit these messages this collected information to the remote base station okay but in maltop lefka this remote clusters these remote clusters do not transmit directly the collected information to the base station, they use neighbor nodes as relay nodes, gateway nodes. So five, instead of transmitting to base station, it transmits information to the nearest neighbor node, 11. Also, our 15 transmits the right side nearest neighbor node again, 20. And also our 11 uses 20 again as relay node. And then our 20, not 20, is responsible to transmit whole information to the base station. So the node 5 at the beginning has to transmit information to the base station. And as you see, there is a huge distance but now it transmits to the 11 which is which has very low distance okay so this usage this uh, proposed maltop lefka protocol approximately provided us 10 percent energy savings when it is compared with Lefka, original Lefka, okay? And this idea was published in IEEE Access Journal, okay? As a uh, journal publication. Now here, <clears throat> there are some problems. I think uh, also you thought that there may be problems. The main problem, there is a huge network load on cluster 4 for this time not 20 and then for the following rounds also these nodes will be cluster heads as you know because we will abuse this one and then we should select uh, this cluster heads so for cluster 4 there is a huge network load so this is one problem in Maltop Lefka. And also, 
these nodes will consume large amount of energy and the significant the most critical problem is what will happen if not 20 dies not 20 becomes broken we will lose whole information related about the whole network so this is very important problem so these problems are still open to solve so with researchers especially phd researchers or postdoc researchers and also master of science researchers are welcome we can study about these topics okay how can we solve these problems how can we provide new solutions to the main problems of maltop lefka okay so uh for uh, before seeing the simulation results i would like to explain one thing one more thing uh what is round maybe some uh students can not uh, understand what is round round corresponds us sensor nodes first measure the environment and then transmit these measurements to the cluster heads in clusters each cluster heads combines the measurements into a single message and then they transmit these our sensor nodes start to measurements and then uh, these measurements again transmitted to the cluster heads and then uh, the messages transmitted to the base station okay so let's see the simulation results at the beginning we said that we use intelligent cluster head selection in low energy fixed clustering algorithm and instead of using random selection at the beginning the intelligent cluster head selection provided us additional energy savings we can see this uh, selection the results of this selection from this figure as you see approximately we obtain 10 percent energy savings when we used random selection at the beginning also for here for intelligent selection to improve the uh, energy efficiency of lefka protocol maybe some machine learning or or deep learning solutions can be applied to lefka protocol at the beginning to provide additional energy savings also this is another open problem in our study so if you have good machine learning deep learning skills we can study about these topics this figure shows the impact of the threshold value in network lifetime as you see we use very low threshold value in other words we use in other words we abuse the cluster heads the energies of them so but also we can change the threshold value there is no problem it can be dynamic and for different applications we can decide the threshold value and we can behave application specific there is no problem and this figure shows the impact of threshold value in network lifetime and also we obtained the energy map of the network for our uh, lefka protocol and leash protocol so this is the most known the fundamental protocol and this is our protocol as you see the black nodes are dead nodes in other words they have no energies okay 
they are out of battery they cannot measure anything and they cannot send anything okay so they are non-useful so as you see there are a lot of dead nodes in the leech network when the round is 3500 this means that we collected 3500 times information okay from the network we collected 3500 times we made measurements for 3500 times okay and as you see there are so many ally nodes still there are so many ally nodes in lefka network and we can collect information from whole parts of the network properly there is no problem we have knowledge about the whole parts of the network but in leech network we cannot collect information sometimes as i said uh, at the beginning for some rounds because of the probabilistic cluster head selection mechanism leech network cannot form n clusters cannot determine n cluster heads so you cannot collect you cannot measure anything from the network uh, let you think about that for example you are trying to transmit uh, information from the uh, fire measurement and you need to measure the environment uh, for each half hour okay and for example for uh, 30 minutes you didn't get any information from the network and what will happen if there became a fire okay you cannot collect information for 30 minutes it's very long duration for a fire okay but for lefka you can collect information for each round so for critical applications lefka is very suitable candidate okay and this figure shows the remaining energy for lefka protocol as you see it has robust nature it has nonlinear distribution but it has robust you can track its energy variation properly for each round there is no problem it has a robust mathematical function and this figure shows the number of align nodes again lefka has the best performance and as you see it's approximately a linear nature you can directly track again monitor the number of dead nodes which nodes were dead okay so this table shows the network lifetime results of lefka and this table was obtained by using iterations okay uh, for each iteration at the beginning we randomly generated our sensor network we randomly deployed 100 sensor nodes into square field and then for each uh, iteration we conducted lefka and the other protocols in simulations and we collected the lifetime results of each algorithm and then for 100 iterations we obtained the average lifetime results for each protocol and as you see lefka has again the best performance and this figure shows the total data transmitted to the base station and uh, in some publications you can see this part as throughput but it is not uh, fully true because throughput corresponds to uh, amount of transmitted useful information to the uh, receiver but uh, here we are studying in network layer so we are not any relation 
we are not interested the content of the data okay the content of the data is highly related the uh, about the data link layer the second layer of OSI layers so therefore uh, we are just tracking the number of packets transmitted to the base station and you know our Lefka, for example uh, at the beginning in Lefka we used 10 intelligent clusters and for each cluster we are transmitting uh, a data packet which includes the all measurements of the cluster members single packet so when we start with 10 clusters for each round we will send 10 10 packets 10 packets 10 packets and when for example the remote cluster which all nodes uh, in that uh, cluster becomes dead and then we will uh, start to transmit uh, you know nine packets nine packets so you can easily track monitor the number of packets transmitted to the base station in Lefka network it is very uh, easy to monitor okay and for different not densities also we had some simulation results what will happen when we decrease the number of nodes, when we increase the number of sensor nodes, and what will happen when we put the base station uh, inside the sensor field. As expected, the lifetimes of all protocols were increased, okay, because the transmission distances significantly decreased. And also, these are, these are some comparisons with Lefka and Maltop Lefka. As I said before, our Maltop Lefka uh, was provided approximately 10% energy savings when we compared it with Lefka. Okay, as a conclusion, today uh, we talked about wireless sensor networks, the uh, especially the methods for distributing the packets into the wireless sensor networks, which methods can be used. We said that there are three main methods, direct transmission, uh, clustering, and multiple routing. We talked about two new protocols, which are Lefka and Maltop Lefka. Lefka is the clustering protocol and it has fixed clusters and threshold based cluster changing mechanism and it uses threshold based selection but it abuses the energies of the cluster head it transmits uh, the information using the cluster heads and the cluster heads remains fixed for many rounds and this idea provided additional and significant energy savings and also Lefka protocol provides full network connectivity and it is very suitable for critical applications such as especially fire earthquake measurements and healthcare applications body area networks and also we talked about Maltop Lefka. Maltop Lefka is an extension to Lefka. It again uses fixed clustering, but also it has Maltop routing nature. So it aims to combine clustering and Maltop routing approaches together. Maltop Lefka uses neighbor cluster heads as relay nodes, gateway nodes, and it aims to increase the lifetime performance of Lefka by using multiple routing and it approximately provides 10% additional energy savings when it is compared with Lefka protocol and for future uh, things we thought that multiple Lefka has some problems because the 
clusters which are closest to the base station has huge network loads. So therefore, how can we solve those problems there? And also, uh, if any connection problem occurs in the closest cluster heads, uh, we can uh, lose whole information about the network. So what can we solve these problems also? It is another open problem for Maltop Lefka. And in addition, for Lefka protocol, at the beginning, we use intelligent cluster heads. So uh, at the beginning, at the cluster formations, can we apply machine learning or deep learning solu solutions uh, for clustering stage? Is it possible? Also, this is, uh, is another open problems okay thank you for listening now we can talk about the questions thank you so much sir for your precious time indeed it was a very well informed session we appreciate you being here and guiding us in this webinar good afternoon i'm avi agarwal second year student of electrical and electronics engineering now i would like to request our participants to get ready for a question and answer session if anyone is having any query regarding the session, then he or she can raise their hand or drop the question in the chat box section. Okay. Um, you can uh, chat, okay? You can uh, put your questions into chat box, dear participants, dear students. Uh, okay, uh, Dr. Koran Kangas, this is uh, Dr. Khadim Moin Siddiqui, organizing secretary of the program. So uh, <clears throat> actually I have one question and would like to ask uh, in our participants, uh, uh, we have large number of students of uh, uh, Bachelor of Technology means uh, undergraduate students and uh, some students are PhD students and some students are MTech students. But uh, uh, since this topic is uh, uh, very relevant and uh, uh, we have seen uh, 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 there is a lot of scope in this topic and students can do uh, many projects. So how uh, will you guide to our uh, undergraduate students, how they can start, how they can start to do a uh, project uh, in this topic. So, uh, sir, uh, please guide us, guide to our undergraduate okay. students. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, th th that's a good question. So uh, for <clears throat> beginning, uh, at first, uh, they should learn the probability and statistics lecture at the beginning. It is very important, especially the random variables, uh, especially the uh, probability distributions and also the Gaussian distribution for noise uh, generation. And then also the wireless communications lectures are very important to have some studies and to have uh, some novel uh, projects in these topics. And then also some networking uh, skills is important. So they can uh, have some network lectures, maybe uh, that are uh, especially eligible uh, network lectures in your university. And then they can use any programming language to uh, conduct the simulations and to build the environment, wireless sensor network environment. For example, they can use MATLAB, they can use C, C++, uh, Java, uh, Python. Also, there are some network simulator tools. For example, uh, network simulator 2, network simulator 3, NS2, NS3. They can use those simulators and in simulations especially, uh, the data structures knowledge is very important uh, because we need to uh, track and we need to uh, record the, uh, some parameters of sensor nodes. For example, energy level, distance, uh, data uh, length. So here, especially the data structure knowledge is very significant for uh, conducting the simulation. So uh, our students can start with probability and 
some programming skills. When they uh, were, they are all combined, then they can easily, I think, uh, generate solutions and they can easily find new uh, ideas in this topic. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you so much, sir, for your uh, detailed answer. Uh, now, Anchor, it is over to you. Now uh, you can ask more questions as we have seen here, one student is asking. Anchor, <clears throat> it is over to you. Okay. Participants may ask their questions. Yes, I'm waiting for the questions. Uh, there is a question, I think. Is it necessary that if Lefka is working well, so why for saving just 10% energy, we spend such money for uh, Maltop Lefka? Please explain, distinguish between Lefka and Maltop Lefka. Okay, actually, uh, <laughs> uh, because we use the existing structure, we use the existing network. So just uh, we are uh, transmitting the collected information from the clusters uh, by using some uh, other neighbor cluster heads. They are also existing. So uh, there is no uh, more money problem, okay? And the distinguish between Lefka and uh, Malta of Lefka is, uh, you know, our Lefka is a clustering protocol and Maltop Lefka also extended version of Lefka, but Maltop Lefka additionally includes a Maltop routing nature. Uh, it uh, does not directly transmit information uh, from the cluster heads to the base stations. It uses some neighbor cluster heads as relay nodes, okay? What is the difference in cluster head and relay node? For our Maltop Lefka, relay nodes and cluster heads are same because we use cluster heads as relay nodes. But in general, relay nodes are uh, defined as the nodes which are used for uh, combining some Maltop communication in wireless networks in generally. We use relay nodes by using hop by hop communications and we use relay nodes to decrease the transmission distances in wireless sensor networks and also all general wireless networks, mobile networks. So therefore, uh, sometimes we need relay nodes and when we increase the frequencies, the bandwidths, uh, our transmission distances will significantly decrease. So then we should use additional relay nodes, but using relay nodes uh, causes to some cost problems. But in our protocol, we did not add any new nodes to the network. We use the nodes which were already distributed already put into the network therefore uh, for us there is no cost problem but in, in general using additional relay nodes will cause to cost problems and also if you use so many relay nodes then you should uh, form a lot of links communication links and therefore you will have a lot of network traffic okay so uh, you should use the relay nodes and you should uh, make these decisions uh, optimal, okay? Optimal relay node usage is good, but uh, redundant usage will cause cost problems and also some additional network traffic, okay? Thank you, sir. Uh, you are now, welcome. Now, I would like to invite Professor Kanika Lamba, Councillor WIE Affinity Group, BBD ITM, to propose a vote of thanks. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. 
it's my privilege to present a vote of thanks on this occasion you all will agree that all of us stand on the shoulder of a giant but it's very rare that we look back and see how they have contributed and acknowledged us as we have heard in this session ieee growth over the last years due to very good system established and yet the support we received from ieee in successive each contributed tremendously in these ways i on behalf of bbt itm and the volunteers extend a heartly vote of thanks to the honorable delegate sir dr koron kenzin who blessed us with his presence and took out his valuable time in spite of some medical issue in the family hats off to you sir i must mention our deep sense of appreciation for honorable guest sir dr koron kenzin for his work and sharing his valuable knowledge in the field of next generation energy efficient protocol for wireless sensor network his research and study will definitely prove fruitful for all of us i take the special opportunity to say a heartfelt thank to our honorable director bbd itm professor bavish kumar chohan who lent his shoulder to wie development due to which wie is established here today and also for telling us where we should go timely suggesting us giving us his rich insights i take the occurrence to thank professor rafiq ahmed i triple e student branch counselor and hod ee and en department for his enormous cooperation hard work and timely guidance who laid the initial stone for building up of wie in bbd itm a very special thanks to dr mokhadi moin siddiqui wie advisor and organizing secretary for his planning dedication and constant support that made to bring the event on working platform i also extend the thanks to all the staff members for their enormous cooperation in the organization of this event event like this cannot happen overnight the wheel started rolling weeks ago it requires proper planning and a bird eye for details we have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very motivated and dedicated student in our college shrikant singh morad nandan tripathi shrey khanna abdullah ahmed and i triple e student committee sakshi parimar chairperson vijay shukla vice chairperson shrey shrey rai treasurer yashika yadav secretary shambhavi webmaster thank you all you student i especially thank the people who have been the backbone of this event i cannot thank everyone enough for their involvement and their willingness to take on this talk task beyond their comfort zone making this event a successful thanks a lot to everyone one and all directly or indirectly in the involvement of this program thank you jai hind thank you so much ma'am uh, before this session ends i would like to request our participants to please fill the feedback form which has been provided in the chat box section also the link for the quiz regarding the session is provided it is mandatory for the participants to fill the fill both feedback and quiz forms to get their certificates now i would like to call upon our respected hod double e and en department professor rafiq ahmed to declare the session officially closed you are welcome thank you uh, thank, thank you for the invitation uh thank you so much uh, uh, dr uh, koran kangis and uh, it was a excellent lecture and uh, our students uh, have learned a lot and we also have learned a lot now uh, 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 we will see our students uh, will come uh, through this topic for the final year project then uh, surely uh, i will Uh, contact you thank you so much sir and uh, 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 our attorney sir uh, uh, i think uh, there is some technical problem he is not getting voice so as a organizing secretary i declare the session closed thank you so much all thank you so much honorable speaker dr koran kenge thank you so much sir thank you, you are sir. welcome you are welcome uh, here is the poster of our upcoming event in distinguished lecture series participants may now leave the session thank you